Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So many of you requested for a podman tutorial and here we go. In today's video, let's explore what is podman? How is podman compared to docker? Should you really move away from docker and get started with podman? Finally, you will also learn how to install podman and run your first container using podman. Overall, this is going to be a quite interesting lecture. Just make sure you watch it till the end. First things first, when Docker exists as a container platform, why did Podman evolve? I mean, what challenges with Docker was Podman trying to address? So when Podman was initially created, there were two major challenges with Docker. The first challenge, the primary component of Docker, that is the Docker daemon, was running as a root user. What do I mean by that? Now, if you know the architecture of Docker, Docker daemon is one of the primary components. And using the Docker daemon, whenever you run the commands through the Docker CLI, or even if you use Docker desktop or the Docker user interface, end of the day, daemon is the one that is running your containers, right? Now, this primary process or this primary service always runs as a root Linux user. I have Docker installed on my EC2 instance. And, you know, when I run this PS AUX and try to look for Docker daemon process, you can see that the root user is the one that has initiated this process for the service. This is the default behavior and this is one thing Podman was trying to solve. Now you might ask, what happens if daemon runs as a root user? Imagine one of your application developers created a container and you know, this application developer did not follow all the best practices and created the container. Imagine this container is running as a root user. And for some reason, this application in the container, it downloads some libraries from the internet or it tries to connect to third party applications. And accidentally or unfortunately, it got compromised. So hacker was able to gain access to the container. Now this is quite possible because of the security issues, because of raising security concerns. Hackers always tries to get access to your applications and because the developer did not follow the best practices, hacker was able to get access to the container. Now this is still fine considering one of your application is compromised, but because this container has access to the Docker daemon and Docker daemon is running as a root user, technically the hacker can gain access to the root user. And hacker can run a container with escalated privileges. That is, they can run the container with highest privileges. Imagine the hacker runs a new container and this time hacker mounts the entire file system onto the container. So your entire file system is compromised. For example, the command that you see on the screen right now, this can be used to plant a backdoor onto your Linux instance. Now, this is one challenge that Podman was trying to solve. And during the evolution of Podman, or Podman was also created to solve another challenge with Docker, that is the single point of failure of Docker daemon. Again, you know, this challenge is also related to Docker daemon, where it's a single point of failure. You know, today if I go to my Linux instance, or wherever Docker is running. And if I stop the daemon using systemctl stop, all the containers that are running on the Linux instance will be stopped. So accidentally or unfortunately, if the Docker daemon goes down, all the containers, it might be 10 microservices, it might be 100 microservices, all of them go down, resulting in a bad customer experience. In the cloud native world, 
and whenever you are dealing with microservices this is not at all acceptable so these are two major challenges was that podman was trying to solve and how did podman solve these challenges so podman decided to go demonless so going demonless avoids single point of failure and also because there is no demon even if a single container is compromised you know mostly with podman you can the default behavior is that the containers do not run as a root user but even if one of your containers is compromised the rest of the containers are not compromised and the node on which you are running docker is also not compromised and that is what typically the podman documentation also tells you so podman is demonless and it is also very secure because rootless containers is one of the primary advantages of podman now you might ask but abhishek are these challenges or do these challenges still exist with docker the answer is yes and no so docker has addressed most of these challenges for example the first challenge that we discussed being rootless so you can already see that you can run docker in the rootless mode so they have very detailed steps of course you need to follow certain steps by default docker daemon runs as a root user but by following certain steps and the best practices you can actually run docker as rootless now this will eliminate the first challenge now when it comes to the second challenge the single point of failure this is very unlikely as i explained during the introduction as well so docker daemon going down unless and until someone intentionally stops it or maybe your docker desktop which is running the docker daemon goes out of resources this is very unlikely to happen but anyways this is one of the challenge that you still need to take care when you are dealing with docker of course by following the best practices you can also eliminate it but still there is a chance that this second challenge you can run into this while using docker now the big question is should you move away from docker is podman all good and you should be moving away from docker to podman today let's understand that once we learn how to install podman and how to run our first container using podman now podman makes it very simple so what they have done they have made their api docker compatible so now when you use the podman cli or even when you use podman desktop you can typically run the same commands that you run with docker and you can also use your existing docker files for example if we go back to the ec2 instance you know i can quickly install podman on it so i will just run the command sudo app get hyphen y install podman now this is going to install podman on one machine and now when i run podman so you will see that most of the commands for example attach is used to attach a running container podman build is similar to docker build podman commit is exactly same as docker commit it also supports your docker compose file so what they have done just like valky has done with redis making the api compatible podman also has made most of the commands compatible so the reason for making it is very simple if someone wants to transition from docker to podman you now their life becomes very easy they can even create a simple alias docker is equals to podman and they can just continue to use the docker commands itself so you will find the cp command create diff everything that is similar to docker now so in the world of podman just like you create docker files in the world of podman we create container files of course you can name it as docker file as well but it's just a best practice to call it as a container file what podman typically tries to do 
it tries to be vendor neutral so instead of dealing with podman it is oci complaint open container initiative complaint so it works with docker it works with builda it works with any other oci complaint oci complaint container platforms so you know i'll just use this basic container file which is similar to docker file for example i can just say from alpine latest right and then you know i can just set a label where i'll just provide some metadata information for example maintainer is equals to abhishek viramala i'll not complicate by writing a complex container file but let's use a very simple uh, container file where because this is alpine so we'll use apk update and then we will just run a shell script which is a hello world shell script and in the entry point i'll just invoke the shell script of course i just need to define the shell script at the same time so this is going to be my shell script a very simple one vim hello dot sh and within this shebang followed by echo statement and curl let's grant privileges to it i'll just say 777 for the purpose of demo and let's try to execute the container using podman as i told you commands are going to be the same instead of docker i'll just say podman build hyphen t my podman demo hyphen f container file dot so it started building right and then to run the container once the image is built you can just check by using podman images right so this is the image my podman image and i will run using podman run hyphen hyphen rm to just remove the container once the purpose is done followed by my podman demo if you want to tag you can also tag it but for now i am good and you can see the response hello from the podman that means shell script is executed and with podman there is no tight integration with docker hub you can actually push it to docker hub or you can also push it to any other place so that you don't also run into rate limiting issue with docker if you use a lot of docker hub or if you continuously try to pull the images from docker hub using your free account you might run into rate limiting issues which is eliminated using podman but abhishek is there any uh, container registry that podman endorses just like docker endorses docker hub so podman endorses qua.io so qua.io is basically a free container registry which does not have any rate limiting at this point of time right so this is how you can use podman it is very very easy to migrate now let's discuss about the big elephant in the room should you actually migrate from docker to podman right now this is an important question now the answer is basically not very important like let's say if you are already using docker and your question is should i migrate to podman today the answer is no it is not mandatory or it is not required why docker is already trying to solve the problem right for example as i've shown you you can run docker in the rootless mode similarly you can also address the challenge of docker daemon going down with proper observability or making sure your docker desktop gets enough resources and the most important thing is that the community of the docker the third party integrations of the docker are quite more when compared to podman now you are using docker not only because of the basic features of docker but docker comes with a lot of advanced features for example i have been using podman for a while now even while i was working with red hat i have extensively used podman 
because Red Hat is one of the primary contributors of Podman. There are some issues with Podman when you use it with macOS. You all know I use macOS and you know, typically when you continue to use Podman with macOS, there are some challenges running the containers and also when you try to use Kubernetes with Podman, especially challenges with creating the networks. I'm not going deep in this video, what kind of challenges, but when you try to create networks with Podman, you know, it is little complex when compared to Docker. With Docker, the network creation and network isolation that Docker does is far better. And most importantly, I was talking about the community. Basically, Docker is doing great job with respect to AI, with respect to MCP servers. They have recently introduced Docker Build Cloud, test containers. They have come up with Docker Jordan, right? There are very cool features that Docker is working on. So it's not only about using Docker CLI or to run the containers, but it is about the entire ecosystem. And if you're working in an enterprise, you can actually use uh, Docker Enterprise instead of your Docker free user, where you can get more advanced things. For example, you can generate a complete Docker file using Docker in it, and it works fine for your basic containers or microservices. You don't even have to write the Docker file. These are some of the cool things that Docker is working on. So in short, my answer is not very required, but if you are someone who is very, very interested in open source, and if you are someone who is interested, you know, in focusing on this major problem, which I feel, yeah, it makes sense. Like if you are focused on a single point of failure, and if this is something that is bothering your organization and probably you as a developer or DevOps engineer, you can move to Podman and moving is not at all difficult. I should, I should admire Podman for doing a great job there. You know, they have made the complete APIs compatible. Just create an alias, something like alias Podman, sorry, Docker is equals to Podman and that's all. Any Docker command that you execute are actually using Podman. And they are OCI compliant and they're also vendor neutral. So using Podman, you can still continue to push your images to Docker Hub. Now, this is a detailed comparison I have for you in the video. If you want me to talk about any specific feature of Podman or even any specific feature of Docker, because I'm actively working with both of these tools, I'm more than happy to make a video on it. I hope you found the video informative. Thank you so much for watching it. See you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.